Hey guys, welcome back to another video. After my last video, I got a lot of good feedback on the lathe, and I've gone and made a version 2. Kinda. It's not an add-on for the mill like version 1, instead just being a standalone lathe. This has a bunch of benefits, most notably the size of the work that can be worked on. Now the theoretical maximum length of a workpiece is 20cm. In terms of what changed from version 1, there's actually only 4 new pieces, the tailstock, the rear support block, and these supports here for the 6mm rod that acts as a tool rest. The lathe now has two configurations, regular mode with a live tailstock, and mandrel mode which is intended for turning pens. The mandrel configuration consists of a threaded rod running the length of the lathe and through the tailstock, with a wing nut to tighten down on the workpiece. I have not successfully turned a pen yet, but that's probably to do with the 3D printed slimline pen bushings I made melting not because the lathe itself failed. I've ordered actual bushings and will be testing pen turning and making again in the future, and I'm optimistic it'll work. The test at the start of the video was using the mandrel setup to turn square stock, as a test for future pen making. If you instead want to use a live tail stock, it's simple to change between. Simply remove the mandrel setup, insert a pointed rod, and bolt a cap piece on to keep it in place. Both the headstock and the tailstock use 10mm outer diameter bearings. The inner diameter is up to you depending on what hardware you have, but I use 5mm inner diameter for the headstock and 6mm inner diameter for the tailstock. The headstock is exactly the same as version 1. It has a 3 speed pulley, 4 10mm outer diameter bearings, an ER11 collet chuck and most notably in my opinion, 4 532nd rods that run through the headstock and bolt under the board below. These serve to compress the print and keep it very rigid. It's powered by a sewing machine motor. The tailstock runs on between 2 to 4 532nd steel rods. It's on 3 right now because I ran out of steel. It's actuated on a 532nd threaded rod, which also runs the length of the lathe. Onto the test from the start. It's another handle. It turned out just fine. The lathe handled it with no problem. I actually don't like how it looks, but that's my fault with the lathes. To finish, here's all my test pieces from making versions 1 and 2 of this lathe. From left to right, it's cool to see how the lathe has improved with each iteration. Anyways, thanks to those for watching. Parts are linked to the description, along with socials and whatnot and stuff. Thanks for watching.